You're listening to Creative Breakthrough, the podcast that provides you with the strategies to elevate your creative passion to the next level. I'm your host, creative hustler, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. And yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Welcome to the Creative Breakthrough and Happy New Year. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on this first episode of 2021. I have an amazing year of interviews and conversations to share with you all. And so I'm so excited that you guys are here for this first episode because this is a big episode and you're going to hear why in just a second. Now, I don't know about you all, but I am super excited for 2021. Despite what happened here in the United States last week at the Capitol, I, I am optimistic and I very much believe that 2021 is going to be the year for creatives. No matter what type of creative you are, this is our year. And I am going to manifest that. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, what I mean by manifesting that. Now, I mentioned this in my last episode of 2020. I did not finish all my goals for 2020. So I am moving those goals into 2021. And I told you all, I... I am okay if you didn't make your goals either because we survived 2020 and that's all that matters. If you made it out of 2020, applaud yourself and applaud yourself even more if you can go back and write down 10 things that you learned about yourself in 2020. For example, I learned how to love myself. I learned how to be okay being by myself. I learned that I could entertain myself to a degree and be okay being alone. And for me, that is a huge win. So because I've, I've learned this whole idea of self-love and self-care, I've decided in 2021, I want to set intentions for myself. Now, I don't really know what an intention was. So if you don't know, that's fine because I had to Google it and I really liked what I found. So I'm going to share with you what is an intention versus what is a goal and how you can write your own intentions for yourself. Now, An intention is one of those things you might have seen on Pinterest or on Instagram where people say, these are things I say to myself every morning when I wake up. Like, I am going to be kind to myself. I am going to treat others the way I would like to be treated. Those are intentions, right? So an intention is a manifestation. It is a visualization. It's what do you want from today? It's in the present moment. Intentions are lived each day dependent of achieving your goals or your destination, right? So... Every day, somebody, what people do is they write down their intentions either on a sticky note or on their mirror in their bathroom. And every day they say these to themselves and they repeat them to themselves. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to be mindful of what I eat today. I'm going to treat my body like a temple. Like these are all intentions. So you, you've seen what an intention is. You are aware of these. Um, you might have just not known they're called intentions, or at least I didn't know. I thought they were just called like self-love talk pieces. But anyways, so now what's a goal? Okay. A goal is focused on the future. So like you set goals of things you want to accomplish in 2021. So they're, they're a destination. They're a specific achievement that you're hoping to reach. So goals are more like long-term and intentions are short-term. Intentions are every day, 24 seven. What are you hoping to accomplish today? What are you hoping to improve about yourself today? And so for me, a lot about a lot of that is just to keep reminding myself about self-love. Now, here's the thing about intentions. You can have more than one. You can have five. You can have 10. You can have 20 intentions, right? You can have one for your professional career, for your creative career, for spirituality, for health and wellness. Like there is no limit. So what I would love to encourage you all to do is to write down one or two intentions that you want to live every day. And then join us on the Facebook community and share those with us. Tell us what those intentions are. And you can find our Facebook uh, group at, go to Facebook and then search Creative Breakthrough Community. And in there, you're going to find a bunch of resources and opportunities and competitions and also a lot of group chats. And just drop, drop in the group chat, what is your intention for 2021? So that we can hold each other accountable. Okay. So I can say I am so happy 2020 is over. For those of you who have been tuning in forever since I started this podcast two years ago, you may recall how much I hated 2020. In January, someone I loved dearly was removed from my life. Then a few weeks later, COVID hit. Then all the comedy clubs shut down. Then I lost my job. And it just went on and on and on. And I felt like I was just falling deeper and deeper into this funk, right? Which 
I found out it's called depression and I had to climb myself back out of that, right? And so in the grand scheme of things, I mean, my life wasn't that bad. I didn't catch COVID, none of my immediate families caught COVID, but I was feeling really crappy about where I was. I felt like I was just angry all the time. And then all of a sudden my season changed, right? My season changed in November around, around Thanksgiving time here in the United States. And I, I switched out of this season of feeling angry and sad to this season of understanding myself and self-love and creating opportunities for myself and kind of just snapping out of this depression that I was in. And all of a sudden I started creating opportunities for myself again. Once I fixed my mindset and I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you guys stuff that I haven't shared publicly a lot of this, but in the last 45 days between Thanksgiving here in the United States, so like the third week of November and this past week of January, in the last 45 days, I have had the opportunity to perform stand-up comedy for over 100 incoming freshmen at Brown University. I was asked to lead a podcasting workshop for students, high school students across the United States, Europe, Asia, and Africa. I co-hosted the Ismaili New Year's Eve celebration, which was amazing. It was virtual, but it was just such an awesome opportunity to just do something creative again on such a big stage. I was invited to be the keynote speaker at an event called Unstoppable. And you can imagine, I spoke about how to be unstoppable by eating chicken wings. You guys should definitely check it out. I might share, I, I mean, you actually can't check it out until I share it with you all, but I might share it on a future podcast episode because I'm very proud of how I was able to connect chicken wings to being unstoppable. And then the biggest news that I hinted about a couple weeks ago is that Spotify, Yes, Spotify reached out to me to record an episode for them about creativity. And then they took that episode and they shared it with all their employees at their holiday party, which was virtual, which means employees from all over the world were able to listen to this podcast podcast episode that I recorded for them. And this all happened within 45 days. And all of this happened within 45 days. And you know what I've learned from all of this? is to just slow down and enjoy the moment. Enjoy the opportunities, be grateful for them. Stop and remember how it feels. How does it feel when that phone rings? How does it feel when you book the gig? How does it feel when you're presenting, when you're performing? And how do you feel afterwards? And I've been really, really adamant about journaling, about all these emotions, because I find that when I'm hit with rejection, right? I let myself marinate in it. That's all I can think about. I just spin over it over and over again. I overanalyze it, I overthink it. But when I'm faced with a win or an opportunity, I jump up and down, I might share it with a couple people, I may post it on social media, and then I move on. I'm on to the next opportunity, I'm on to the next win, I'm on to the next challenge, right? So I don't really stop and savor the moment. And that is going to be one of my intentions for 2021. In 2021, I am going to make the intention that I want to slow down and be grateful for the opportunities I'm given. I want to relish in that feeling of excitement and joy. I want to write it down. I want to be able to relive it over and over again. I want to overanalyze being happy and being joyful and being grateful so that when I'm in a season again of being sad and angry, I can look at these moments and see how far I have come and what I can learn from those opportunities. Because I, I really believe we go through seasons and we're supposed to learn something from each season. And so for 2020, in that season of being angry and sad, I was supposed to learn how to love myself, how to believe in myself again, and then also just to remember the happy moments so that I don't have to savor and overthink the sad moments. So with that said, today I'm going to share with you that episode from Spotify. Okay, but before we get to this episode, some even bigger news. For those of you who know Bevy Smith, now Bevy Smith is on Instagram. You can find her at Bevy Smith. You may know her from Fashion Queens on Bravo or Page Six, or you met, may have met her at the American Black Film Festival. That is where I met her. And she is an inspiration. She is a godsend. And she released a book this week. And it it's amazing. I read it in two days and I was blown away. Like it is inspiring. It is refreshing. And the, and the, and the thing is, is like, as I was reading it, 
I could see myself in her shoes. Like she's 56 years old and she takes you through her entire journey, through her 20s, through her 30s, through her 40s. She talks to you about changing career paths. She talks to you about going for her passions. She go, talks to you about finding her purpose in life. And it is so enlightening and it is so inspiring. And I was so taken back by this book because in two days, this book really moved me. So what I did was I contacted Bevy Smith and I was like, listen, Bevy, I know your book just came out and you must be really busy, but I would love to talk to you about your book. And I explained to her my podcast and lo and behold, she actually knew my podcast. She'd heard about it and she was like, yes, for sure. I want to be on your podcast. Let's do it. So in two weeks time, Bevy Smith is going to be on this podcast talking about her new book, Bevelations. And I highly, highly, highly encourage you one to check out the book, take a read, listen to it. However you consume, uh, books, audio, all that stuff. And then send me any questions you have. What do you want me to ask Bevy Smith? What would you like to know from her? What advice, what tips, what inspiration, what in the book do you have questions about? Let me know. Send me an email, hi at funnybrowngirl.com. Slide into my DMs at funnybrowngirl on Twitter or Instagram. Join us on the Facebook group. Ask me the question there. But I am so excited about this. Okay, so with that said, because 2021 is off to a great start. I, I'm not gonna lie. 2021 is like, 180 degrees different than 2020 for me. So I apologize. I am like on cloud nine right now. And I think you all should be on cloud nine right now because I have shown you that you can switch out of a season. You can make that move. It is a hard move to make. I understand that. But what I would say, what really helped me is pull out your journals, start writing. It is so hard. I know, I know how hard it is to write. I know how hard it is to be open up yourself, to pour out your emotions and, and then, and power through it. I know that. And I'm telling you though, that if you keep journaling and you keep putting those emotions out there, it will clear your mind to go out after what you want. It will switch you from that depressed feeling to that happy feeling. It will switch you from over analyzing the anxious parts of your life, the sad parts of your life, the angry parts of your life, and allow you to focus on the good and the happy. And then I lastly say, be grateful. Just continue to remember to be grateful. I highly, highly believe, and I'm not the only one when I say this, because Bevy Smith says this in her book too. I highly believe that everything happens for a reason. And I know some people hate that phrase. I, I, when people started saying this to me last year at this time, everything happens for a reason. I was so angry because I was like, but why does it happen? What causes it to happen? Why don't I have a say in what happened? We always don't get a say in what happens, but I do think that the universe manifests itself in a way that everything happens for a reason. And if something is not going, is not aligning with your purpose in this world, then the universe takes it away from you. And if something needs to be put in your life, the universe gives it to you, but just as fast, the universe will take it back from you. And so it's always just really important to understand that the universe has your best interest in mind and it's your job to just continue pushing forward. So. With that said, I am so excited to share with you this podcast episode. So I did this episode for Spotify and it's how to be a creative and how to stay being a creative. And so I give you tips and advice on how I live my day-to-day -day life to stay and be creative. So I hope you enjoy it. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, Spotify, and thank you for inviting me to your party. I am so excited to be here with you. I am Shireen Kassam, a stand-up comedian, a strategy advisor at a Fortune 100 company, and the host of this podcast, Creative Breakthrough, plus a bunch of other creative things that we're going to get into, which means I have to come up with creative ideas on a daily basis. But was I always creative? Nope. I was the least creative person you ever met. As a child, I was actually a math geek. I was at every math competition there was. When other kids were coloring, my parents had me doing math problems. And I actually really loved it. Like I was actually excited that I got to do math problems and not do the arts when other kids were doing that. But I also actually really hated the arts because every time we would go out to eat, um, when we would go to restaurants, you know how they would sometimes give you coloring books and crayons? I had this one aunt who always, always, always would grab the crayons from me and be like, Shireen, you are doing this wrong. Let me show you how to color. And I think I purposely would draw and color outside the lines just to upset her. And so maybe I always had some creativity in me and I just didn't know it. But why do I tell you this story? It's because I want you to know that creativity is not a gene or a trait. You are not born being a creative person. You can actually learn how to be a creative through repetitiveness. 
And how do I know this? Because this is me. I didn't learn how to be creative on day one. I learned how to be creative through trial and practice. I didn't become a strategy consultant until my 20s. I performed my first stand-up comedy set in my mid-20s. I didn't start this podcast. I didn't get on the radio. I didn't start acting. And I didn't write my first TV pilot until my 30s. And I did all of this by reading books, taking classes, and just practicing, constantly practicing. Because I learned that creativity is a muscle that has to be worked out. Similarly to going to the gym, once you stop using your brain, you kind of realize like it turns to muck. Like, have you ever read a book? And if you hadn't read in a really long time, you really have a hard time focusing and staying at, paying attention to what you're reading. It's the same thing with creativity. You have to keep doing it. You also have to be very, very okay with stepping outside of your comfort zone. You gotta be open to letting go and enjoying the freedom of your thoughts and ideas. You can't filter things as they're coming through your head. And this is really hard because sometimes as creatives, we'll start going down this rabbit hole and we stop ourselves, but that's, that's where it's really important just to let yourself go and keep dreaming. So how do I keep my muscles strong? Okay, so there's two ways that I keep my muscles strong. The first one is called mindfulness. Now, the first time someone told me about being mindful, I kind of brushed them aside because I thought that meant you had to meditate and I am the worst at meditation. But I quickly learned that mindfulness means you, that you are intentionally paying attention with openness, kindness, and curiosity. So let's dissect that a little bit, okay? So what do I mean? When I say that you have to be open, I mean you have to be open to new ideas, new ways of thinking, trying new things. So like when it comes down to even as simple as someone saying, try this new food or let's try this new experience, being open to trying new things to help spur your creativity and your spark your brain. Second of all, what do I mean when I say curiosity? That just means looking at things with a fresh eye or fresh eyes. How do, you, how do you look at things now and then how can you look at it? What's a different angle? How are other people looking at the situation but in a different light? And then ask a lot of questions because maybe you'll learn something when you start asking questions. And then the last one which is super important is kindness. And this means that you're kind to yourself. We can be super critical of our own work. So it is super important to be kind to yourself but also be kind to other creatives because everybody is on their own journey. I will say as a creative, my biggest downfall is how, how deconstructive I am to myself or how, con what's the word? I'm the biggest critic of myself. That is my biggest downfall and something I have to work on. So it's definitely something to keep in your toolkit. The second thing about keeping your muscles strong is freshness. What do I mean by this? Freshness means always trying new things and new ideas. So again, it's kind of related to mindfulness, but it's a little different. It's kind of, somebody explained it to me like this. Say you're a handyman, right? And you're really good with a hammer and that's all you use is a hammer. And then somebody introduces you to a screwdriver, but you're not really sure you feel comfortable with a screwdriver. Freshness means that you will go and learn how to use a screwdriver and then you'll go and learn how to use a wrench and then you'll go and use all the other tools in the toolbox, even though you're just most comfortable using a hammer. Freshness means stepping outside of your comfort zone. So say you work, you work in a certain industry, right? How do you step outside of that industry and learn about what else is happening in the world around you? What are the other ideas that people are doing? What else is happening with your competitors? What else is happening with people who might not be your competitors but are also doing really cool things in the space? So freshness is just being open to that. It's stepping out of your day to day and being open to what is happening. I will say that this can be super difficult because of this device, my cell phone. Your cell phone is what sometimes is a determinant to staying fresh because we're so addicted to it. We're so, cons I don't know about you guys, but I, I get 200, 250 emails a day, plus Facebook messages, Instagram messages, WhatsApp text message. It is really hard just to step outside of my phone. And so that is probably the biggest thing I can say to you is step away from your cell phone. Okay. So how do you practice mindfulness and, fr and freshness? How do you put it into action? Well, I have 10 steps to share with you guys today. So the first one is what I just mentioned. You have to unplug from your phone. This is key. I find that I'm the most creative when I'm not checking my phone all the time. When I focus on just doing nothing. Like, do you, do you notice like when you're taking a shower or maybe when you're cooking or even when you're driving or going for a walk, right? 
or take or working out, you don't have your phone with you. And that's when your brain really starts to move. Like you start coming up with these ideas, you start thinking outside the box, you start, you start actually using your brain because you're not so focused on your phone. Um, and I find that that's super important to me is always just like finding time in my day to step away from my phone. So I find that I'm the most creative when I am making breakfast, taking a shower, uh, before COVID, when I used to take the subway, I would zone out on the subway. Sometimes when I'm driving, be careful though, when you're driving, don't zone out too much. Um, or working out, just being away from your cell phone, being away from all the hustle and bustle and those, and those annoying ding, 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 dings. The second one, the second step to practicing mindfulness and freshness is always keep learning. Like I mentioned earlier, I took a lot of classes in the creative space. I took a class on how to do comedy, how to act, how to write a TV pilot. I think classes are a really great space or time or way to immerse yourself in the creative space. And not only just immerse yourself, but you're surrounded by people who also want to be creative, that you can bounce ideas off of, that can teach you their ways, that can help you elevate in your creative journey. So definitely take some classes. But if you don't want to take a class, I highly, highly encourage you to listen to podcasts, listen to TED Talks, read. Reading is super important to keep your brain moving and learning new things. But really, I think learning is a key tool. Um, and not just about, again, going back to freshness, not just reading and learning about things in your industry, but spreading yourself out. There is actually research that says that knowing more about everything happening in the world, like being a generalist, is better than just focusing on what you know. Because the more you know, the more you can pull from when you're trying to ideate and be creative. The third thing is don't be afraid of bad or simple ideas. When you first start being creative, sometimes you're going to come up with ideas that you're going to laugh at yourself about. You're going to be you're going to say that's so silly, that's never going to work. I can do better than this. And you probably can do better than that. That. But just because you had a bad or a silly idea does not mean that you stop. I have so many bad ideas. Like when I write a joke and I start writing the joke and then I get to the punchline, my first punchline, my second punchline, sometimes my 10th punchline are not funny. But I just go on stage and I keep trying them and I keep trying them and I reiterate and I keep reworking it till I get to where I need to get it to be. I really think it's super important though to embrace those bad ideas. So even no matter how bad of an idea it is, write it down or share it with someone. And I say that because this is how our brain works. Have you ever, have you ever been treated poorly by someone? Like has somebody ever really upset you and you didn't tell them and then you let it fester within yourself for days and you're just like, I wish I told them that? That's kind of like a creative idea. You have to write the creative idea down so that your brain registers that you captured that idea and now it can start thinking about a new idea. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep spinning on that bad idea. Another really cool thing that I try to do with my ideas, which, which I said about the punchlines when I do jokes or even at work when I'm coming up with new ideas for products or services, share those bad ideas or what I consider a bad idea with other people on my team because you never know how somebody else can view that idea and what somebody else could do with that idea. So somebody may say to your idea, wow, that's actually really interesting. What if we added this to it? Or what if we thought about it from this angle? And so a lot of times creativity is also about teamwork and working together to really flush something out. So don't be afraid to share your ideas and don't be afraid of those bad ideas because those bad ideas will then turn to gold. The fourth thing that I would say to do is research. You've probably heard the phrase, don't reinvent the wheel. There's also another phrase that says there's no new ideas, there's just better ideas. When somebody comes to me, like a Fortune 100 company, and says, Shereen, we need to come up with a new product or a new service, or we need to drive more revenue, or we need to come up with a new marketing plan, the first thing I do is research. What is happening in the space today? What are my competitors doing? What are we doing? What else is happening out there? I read the blogs. I read the comments in the blogs because sometimes there is gold in those comments once you get past all the negativity. I read Facebook groups. I read Reddit chats because a lot of times your ideas are right there in front of you. Your customer has already told you what they want from you. All you have to do is find it and then tweak it and make it amazing. So I highly suggest research because like look at like look at all these ride delivery or these ride food delivery services and ride share programs, right? None of them are really unique in their own way, but they all sort of come up with an idea and then somebody makes it better and another company makes it better until you just have all these companies that are kind of doing the same thing and then you've got to pick which one you actually like. The fifth idea is 
is ask questions. As a creative, you have to ask a lot of questions. I know sometimes we shy away from asking questions because we don't want to look silly or stupid or we don't want to think somebody doesn't uh, like think we are asking the right questions. It is super important to ask questions because that's only how you're going to figure out what you, what people want from you. So like if you if you're writing a TV pilot, right? I wrote a TV pilot and I got the feedback that it it was it was really good, but it wasn't what they were looking for. Well, what are you looking for? So let's ask questions. Let's figure out how do I get this TV pilot to where you want it to be? And you know what? It was super simple. I made my characters all in their mid 20s and the TV production company wanted their characters to be teenagers in their in their in their teens. So all I had to do was rewrite the characters to be a little younger, which was a challenge for me because I'm not I'm not a young person anymore. But all it did was take that one question and then all of a sudden my TV pilot was in the semifinals because I asked that one question, what was wrong with it? So don't be afraid to ask questions. The sixth way to do to put mindfulness and freshness into practice is the power of yes. This one is my favorite. I am obsessed with the power of yes. Now, I was not always obsessed with the power of yes. In my mid-20s, I only discovered stand-up comedy because somebody, one of my friends, kept annoying me and irritating me to go to a comedy show. And I actually was begrudgingly saying no, 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 no. And then finally, I said, fine, we'll go to this comedy show. And I was in my mid-20s. I had never seen comedy before. I didn't know what stand-up comedy was. And I was sitting in this show, and that's when it occurred to me, like, this is what I want to do. I want to do stand-up comedy. And if I hadn't said yes to that experience, I would have never found my passion. I would have never found what I love to do, what makes me me. I would have never found my talent. And since then, it's just been a consistent number of yeses. When, when they called me and they asked me, hey, Shireen, do you want to be on the radio? I didn't know what that meant. I have never been on the radio. I never thought about doing radio but I said yes, and all of a sudden, I had a weekly show on the radio. Same thing with acting. Somebody said, hey, Shireen, you're really funny. You want to be in my web series. Again, I didn't know what that was. What is a web series? What is acting? Said yes. Now I'm an actor. Like, this is how you start to create those, those, um, those sparks in your brain, trying new things, saying yes to things, because those are going to be what sparks ideas in your head as you're watching new TV shows, new movies, all that stuff, books, TED Talks, podcasts. Take it all in and say yes. The seventh idea to put mindfulness and fre freshness into action is daydream. Now, we all remember what daydreaming was. When we were kids, that's all we used to do. We used to daydream about what our lives could be and our imaginary friends. But if you realize, as we get older, we don't daydream as much. I mean, now sometimes my daydreams are just like, I can't wait for the weekend so that I can like sleep all day, right? That is my daydream. But we can do better than that, right? We have to learn to let our minds wander. And I do this by going for a walk or working out, or like I mentioned, doing some other mindless activity. Because it's really important to let your mind wander and just let loose and step outside of the way you typically do things so that you can renew not just your mind, but your body. There's actually research that shows that spending time outside can inspire you to be creative and shift your original way of thinking. So highly, 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 if you live in an area where you can go for a walk, where it's safe and there's the air is clean and whatnot, I highly suggest going for a walk 5, 10, 15 minutes a day. Just clear your head. Don't I take your cell phone. I take my cell phone with me because I, I always get nervous. I might get lost. But to, don't don't be on your cell phone walking. Like I know if you live in New York, there's a lot of people who just walk down the streets texting all the time. Put your phone away and just relax and take in the nature and and people watch. I get some of my best ideas from people watching. Literally, like you, if you just stop and just watch people, or like if you're at a coffee shop and you just listen to the conversations that people are having. I know it's a little bit difficult with COVID right now, but just. It, Take in what people are saying, and you'll be amazed how much you can learn about just the way people think and process things. The eighth way to practice mindfulness and freshness is forget about being perfect. Like I mentioned before, your initial ideas are not going to be gold. Well, they may be gold, but they're probably not going to be gold. But you're going to keep working at it. You're going to try it. You're going to test it. You're going to improve upon it. You're going to share it with people. They're going to give you their their ideas, their suggestion, their thoughts, and you're just gonna keep working on it and working on it until it becomes gold. That's kind of how a punchline works. I keep testing and trying new things, and I can't be perfect about it. I have to realize that sometimes people aren't gonna laugh, and that just means I've gotta work harder. 
if I gave up comedy the first time I got crickets from a joke, which probably happened the first time I performed, I would have never had the opportunity to be on HBO or work with Arsenio Hall or Carlos Mencia. But I had to keep working on it and I had to say, okay, I'm not perfect. I'm not going to be perfect, but I can at least keep trying at this idea. Number nine, the ninth way to practice mindfulness and freshness is don't be afraid to start over. Sometimes you just have to start from scratch. Maybe your idea is just not going anywhere. Rip it up. Start again. Maybe you just weren't looking at it the right way. Maybe you had gone so far down a rabbit hole and now you were stuck. So to unstuck yourself or unstick yourself, rip it up and start again from the beginning. This might sound like a lot of work, but you'll be surprised how much your brain already, already remembers from the first time you tried something and will now, will now divert itself and try new things. So don't be afraid to start over. And the last way to be practice mindfulness and freshness is to stay consistent. Even if your creativity doesn't kick in today, don't give up tomorrow. Like I mentioned, creativity is a muscle, right? You have to continue to work it out and you have to continue to flex it. So if you're just starting out on your creative process, today may be a rough day. Today you may be frustrated with yourself. Today you may think, I can't do this. But that doesn't mean that if you don't keep trying that you're going to get better at it. You will get better at it. You just have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It's like going for a run. If you haven't exercised in months and you go for a run, your heart is going to hurt. Your legs are going to hurt. You're going to think you're dying. I know this because I've tried running and I can't because I, I don't run on a daily basis. But if I got into the habit of running, oh my God, my life would be different because I would, I would stop having those chest pains and I would stop being an embarrassment outside where I'm like... <gasps> You know what I mean? So like you've got to just keep practicing. So I want to do a quick exercise with you guys to flex your creative muscle, okay? So the first thing I want to do in this exercise is I want you to think of a question that you're trying to solve. What are you looking for for a solution? So for example, are you trying to improve the listener experience on Spotify? Are you trying to come up with novel marketing ideas to, to share Spotify with new audiences? Maybe you're a musician or a writer and you're stuck on a lyric or a storyline. Do you want to start a podcast but not sure what to talk about? Pick a question and now we're going to ideate on that question, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is get a blank sheet of paper just like this or a notebook or something. And I want you to label it with a pen or a pencil. I prefer pen because pencils you can erase, pen you can't. Label it 1 through 20, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your cell phone. I want you to put it in airplane mode for this whole exercise because I don't want you to be, I, you got to keep your cell phone next to you for this exercise, but I don't want you to keep checking why somebody keeps text messaging you. Set a timer for five minutes. And now for five minutes, I just want you to jot down all the ideas that you can about this idea or this solution that you're trying to solve for. Okay. So set your timers and go for five minutes. I'm not going to stop the clock and do it with you guys because I don't have the time. So you're going to have to do this on your own time. Now, after the five minutes are over, I want you to reset your timer for 20, minute, 20 minutes. Again, keep your phone on airplane mode. Now, for this 20 minutes, I'm going to give you a, you can pick which one you want to do. You should have received a coloring book. It may not look like this, but you will have a coloring book that's got all these images inside to color. You can see I'm, I'm doing this one right now. Um, you can take... Pull out your coloring book or put on your running shoes or your walking shoes. And for 20 minutes, I want you to just color or I want you to go for a walk and be in nature. Again, if you're going to go for a walk, please make sure it's safe. It's not dark. You have the right footwear on, all that stuff. Take your precautions, okay? I want you to do this because I just want you to take your mind off things. I want you to relax. I want you to breathe in the fresh air. Now, if you decide to color and you've never colored before and you're kind of like, I mean, you've colored as a child, but maybe not in your adult life. I want you to keep some things in, in mind, and these are really important. One, again, throw perfectionism out of the window. Two, don't worry about the rules. Don't worry about staying within the lines. If your coloring book says um, it gives you like numbers, like paint by number, and it says color this by this color, I forget about it. Don't color the way you want to color. Pick the colors you want to pick. Feel free to color around the image as well. You don't have to stay within the lines. And lastly, have fun, okay? This is, an, this is a time for you to relax. Now, I've had people ask me why coloring. Um, coloring is a really great way to relax. It's a, it's a right-brained activity, so it really gets you to spark your creativity, but it also helps de-stress you, unwind you, focus on your thoughts, um, all, that, all that good stuff. And I'm asking you to do this for 20 minutes. If you have not focused on something for 20 minutes, 
This may seem difficult today, but don't stop. Just keep trying. Every day, just keep adding a few more minutes until your hand doesn't cramp up or you can actually just really focus. Okay, so now that you've done this for 20 minutes, welcome back from your walk or drop your coloring pencils, whichever it is that you chose to do. Now that you've cleared your mind and you're relaxed, set the timer again for 10 minutes and grab your numbered sheet of paper and continue writing out new ideas or solutions and see if you can come up with anything new, anything different, now that your mind is in a different place. I urge you, even if right now you can't come up with a lot of new ideas and you can't get to 20, keep this piece of paper and try doing this exercise tomorrow and the day after and just get in the habit of letting your mind wander, relax, daydream. Because by consistently nurturing your creativity, you will notice how much easier this exercise becomes and how much faster you'll start coming up with ideas. Today is going to be hard, but I tell, I tr trust me, if you do this for 10 days straight, 10 days, all I'm asking for you, by the 10th day, you're, just, you're going to be coming up with ideas even without doing these exercises. You're just going to be coming up with ideas on your own. Okay? So Spotify family, thank you so much for having me, and I wish you all the creative success in your journey. If you have any questions about anything I talked about today or creativity in general, feel free to reach out to me at hi at funnybrowngirl.com or you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok at Funny Brown Girl. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Okay, y'all, I hope you enjoyed the learnings that I dropped in this episode and that they were useful and that you can implement them into your creative pursuits and passions as well. Key takeaways, one, be mindful. Two, step outside of your comfort zone. The power of yes is your best friend. Three, immerse yourself in the creative space, whether it's through classes, podcasts, TED Talks, or people. Four, and super important, and I'm a hypocrite to say this because I really struggle with this, but stop checking your phone. And five, enjoy the process. It is a process. It can be a very long process, but stay determined, stay on the path, stay focused, and you will make it. I have faith in you. You will be successful in your creative passions if you really, really want it. Now, with that said, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thanks for listening. Stay connected about upcoming resources, including opportunities, festivals, competitions, and grants to help you grow your creative passion by subscribing to my bi-monthly newsletter by visiting funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. Don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity and subscribe today at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And hey, if you decide to go on Instagram today, follow me. I'm Funny Brown Girl. I'm Shereen Kassam, and you've been listening to Creative Breakthrough. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.